good morning. Um, sorry. Today is chapter five. Moroni, chapter five. And this is um, the sacramental, the sacrament prayer on the wine and or water. And um, I want to skip around here a little bit. Um, so usually I work out my thoughts a little better on camera. But anyways, um, so it gives a comparison here of the sacrament prayers. And it says, how do the revealed sacrament prayers on the bread and water differ from each other? We can see from the following comparative chart where the differences lie, and then consider what the implications might be. So, I've, I've never, like, held them side by side and was like, oh, this one says this, and this one says this. To me, generally, obviously I haven't been paying close enough attention, they both sound relatively the same in my mind, just, you know, the bread and the water, they have some different words because, you know, bread is for body, water is for blood, you know, which was shed for them, that they may eat or do it, um, that they may, yep, partake, that they may, who drink of it, anyways, so, um, but there's quite a bit missing from the water prayer than there is from the bread prayer, bread prayer. So I'm just going to take it line by line. And it says, O God, the Eternal Father, which is the same across the board, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread, this water, to the souls of all those who partake of it, who drink of it, um, that they may eat in remembrance, that they may do it in remembrance of the body, of the blood, of thy son, of thy son which was shed for them, blood, yeah, um, and witness unto thee, that they may witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them, that they do, and then it skips, so the bread has, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy son. And always remember him. So then it says that they do always remember him in the water one. And then it says, and keep his commandments, which he has given them. Not over there in the water. That they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. But over here it's uh, that they do always remember him. That they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. So what's missing is keep his commandments which he has given them and also um, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy son laying it out and then they left it that way they didn't you know they're like and consider what the implications might be they give no explanation no conclusion nothing of the sort to help guide my train of thought at all so this one I have to take by myself as to what the implications might be. I may, um, I may want to have this printed out and put on a card and have this in the sacrament meeting with me that I can read along and see side by side what what the prayer is saying, and also what it means to me in my life. I think that is something that I want to do just to understand it a little bit better. So, there's that. And then, it gives us a question of conscience. It says, What are we doing to remember and keep the sacramental prayers? Not only in our minds, but also in obeying and keeping the commandments. So, just to go along, you know, what are we doing to, it says to always remember him. So, what are we doing to do that in these prayers, which is a renewal of our covenants each week. Do we, I personally experience it and then move on, which 
isn't how it's supposed to be. All right, and then it gives a memory, which I really like the symbolism of this one. I'm not gonna read it all, uh, just some of it. Okay, so it says that he was visiting a branch. Um, this is Richard J. Allen. He was visiting a branch and he was on the stand and they were singing the sacrament prayer and he was watching the deacons, the young men, um, prepare the sacrament. And it says, um, the sacrament song that day was a well-known hymn whose text begins, while of these emblems we partake in Jesus' name and for his sake. Let us remember and be sure our hearts and hands are clean and pure. Just as we were singing the words, our hearts and hands are clean and pure, I happened to look down at one of the young deacons on the front row and caught him in a priceless pose. He was leaning forward, elbows on knees, both hands outstretched in front of him, palms facing upward towards his countenance. He was staring intently at those two hands with fixed gaze as if to take stock of his spiritual worthiness and make sure his hands were indeed clean and pure. What a great lesson from the de from a dedicated young man. What came to my mind immediately was the scriptural passage, Be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. This event was, for me, a vivid reminder that we should be continually mindful of the Lord's commandment not to partake of my flesh and blood unworthily or knowingly allow others to do so as we work together to achieve more Christ-like patterns of living. So I really liked the the directness to which this young man um, took the words of the of the song. You know, he was making sure that his hands were clean which is kind of a, a funny thought as he's about to pass the sacrament in these days, you know. <laughs> if a young man's hands are not clean these days before passing the sacrament, uh, it would not be good. <laughs> but, um, you know, do we take stock of, do we take the words literally? You know, are our hearts and hands clean and pure? Um Anyways, I liked that, that little story. Um, tomorrow is chapter six and it's broken up into two days. So shorty, short, short. Anyways, that's all I got for chapter five. Love you.